Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for blessing us to be in his house one more time. And I, I thank God for being a pastor. I didn't at first. Let me tell the truth on me. I did not thank God. I thought God was punishing me for being a pastor. Amen. I was content going different places, preaching to different churches. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then letting them pastors deal with that, the, the aftermath. But I thank God for being a pastor. Amen. And I thank God for dreams. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a, an apostle. I'm a dreamer like Joseph. Amen. God showed me things, and then he, he don't tell me how we're going to get there. <laughs> Amen. Like he didn't tell Joseph, but he'll show us the end result. And I praise God for the end result. Amen. Reach over and get your Bibles and turn with me, please, to Luke 22. I'm grateful for God's guidance. I'm grateful for God's leading. Amen. Praise the Lord. This would be a terrible life to try to live if we didn't have the Holy Ghost. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Man's best effort is not good enough. Hallelujah. Your best effort. Hallelujah. And, and notice now, over here, he never told us to try anything. First Peter, he did not say try to live holy because I'm holy. He said be ye holy. And if you turn that script around, you still can't get nothing but holy. Say, holy am I, holy you be. Amen. And praise God in the days and time that we live in, brothers and sisters, God need holy witnesses. God need holy men of God to stand up and be the beacons that he called us to be. We are the light of the world now. Not in the future. We're, we're the light of the world right now. And people that are in darkness need to see God's people. They need to see some realness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the enemy is doing now what he's always tried to do. But thank God for Jesus Christ. One of the greatest scriptures in the Bible, one of the greatest passages in the Bible to me is John 17. When he prayed, not just for them, but for all of those that would believe on him through his name. He prayed for us. And wait a minute. In Hebrews, the Bible declares that he ever lives. So he's interceding for us now. You believe me? Say amen. And I thank God. Amen. Praise God. And listen, he don't only answer prayer, but he's up there to make sure it get done. No slackness in God the Father. But Jesus Christ paid an awesome price for us. And praise God in appreciation for him. Amen. Praise God going all the way for me. Brothers and sisters, I am determined. I am convinced and convicted that this is the right way. The Bible is the truth that God has placed in this earth. And that every saint is going to make heaven. I say every saint. I didn't say church folks now. Every saint is going to make heaven. And that's why I, I, I call the saints together. Amen. I call them together around God's word everywhere where you hear my voice. I'm calling you to, to gather around God's word. Stay where you are. Don't let the devil deceive you that this is the wrong way. And you ain't got it going on. Brothers and sisters, we got it going on. Hallelujah. Listen, power is not what men think it is. The, the, the president of the United States is not the most powerful man in the world. The most powerful man, the most powerful woman is the man or the woman that's got God ear. Why? Because they can't go wrong. If God is instructing you and you obey the instructions, you can't go wrong. I'll take my time this morning. Are you there? Let me show you what's going on. And it's been going on ever since the church came. It was going on before Jesus came into this earth. He did it to all of those that came before us that didn't make the paradise when they left this world before Jesus came. He tried to work it on those that did make it with God. But God was in the mix. Amen now. You there? 
Luke 22, pick it up in that 31st verse. And the Lord said. Now I want you to understand that this man was not filled with the Holy Ghost yet. Hallelujah. So he still was encumbered by his flesh. He still was ruled by his emotions. Hallelujah. Remember that now. Remember that. Everybody look this way here. And he is not or was not some supernatural human being. Made out of the same stuff we made out of. He had his fears. He had his pride. Hallelujah. He had his emotions and Sure enough, he was ruled by his emotions. Read. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Simon, Simon. Notice he didn't, he didn't call him Peter. <laughs> uh, you ain't no rock yet. I know it back in the 16th chapter of, uh, of Matthew, I call you, I change your name. But you're not there yet. You're not going to get there unless you go through the gauntlet. How many know what a gauntlet is? Huh? A gauntlet. It's called your rite of passage where you got people on both sides and the Indians, the Indians, in order for you to graduate to manhood, you had to go through a line. And through that line, they had knives and arrows and they would cut you and you couldn't stop. You had to go all the way through. You had to run the gauntlet to be a man. Hallelujah. I read. Satan has desire to have you. Hold it right there. Satan still desires to have us. Hallelujah. That is still his desire. And Peter didn't find that out until after he got filled with the Holy Ghost and we pick him up in 1 Peter 5 and 8 where he tells us to be sober, to be vigilant for our adversary as a roaring, is walking about as a roaring like lion, seeking whom he may devour, sifting, and the only person that's sifting is to sift every bit of God out of you. Do some trial, do some test, do some tribulation, or do some temptation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Read. That he or may, some discouragement. Read. That he may sift you. He desires you that he may sift you. Y'all familiar with a sifter? All of us in here. Hallelujah. We've used it. Or my mama used it. Amen. That's how you, how you refine flour. That, that flour they got then had them lumps in there. And you put, that, put it in that sift and had a little thing where you turn like that. But it had a screen in there. And the screen would catch all the lumps and you would get nothing but that fine flour. Satan is sifting. But holy brothers and sisters, God is doing some sifting too. However, he gives us the prime opportunity to assist him in sifting us. That's why we got Ephesians. Pull off the huh, old man and his deeds and put on this new man, which after God is created in righteous and true holiness. That's the sifting part. You get rid of the old, come into the new. Read it. 32. But I have prayed for but, you. Uh, there it is. There it is, Sister Alice. There it is. Sister Jesse, there it is. This is why the saints are powerful. This is why the saints were powerful coming into this thing here. Hallelujah. Wait a minute, brothers and sisters. God ain't changed his mind. And God had lost one ounce of power, and everything that Jesus Christ said is coming to pass. And my confidence is, if, since I'm looking at what he said was going to take place, I know I can put my soul on this. Huh? What would a man profit? Profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? But I, my soul is on this here. I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, all, all I got is riding on this. You be the same, man. Everything I got is riding on this. Brother, my soul is in here. My soul is resting because of the power of my Savior, the keeping power. Saint said, he'll keep you if you want to be kept. But sad to say, a lot of us don't want to be kept. We want to try to play the edge, amen. We want to try to walk the edge. Live close enough to the world where I won't get convicted. Hold it, hold it. If you get close to the world and God don't convict you, that means you all ready to slid over. I said a while back, if I backslide in a man on the face of this earth and won't be one born to come get me. 
And God ain't going to come get me. I know about him. I know the way back. It's through repentance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read. Satan decides you that he may sift you, sift as, you wheat. as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. But I have prayed for thee. Read. That thy faith fail that not. That thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted. And when, not if. He's preaching fear and risk. You and Satan, the hardest time you're going to have, Peter, is right here. When they come take me and I, I disarm you, you're going to have a problem. And three times he fulfilled what Jesus said, didn't he not? Amen. He, amen. He did it unconsciously because of his flesh. He was still in his flesh walking by his flesh and knowing what they was going to do to Jesus when they identified Peter, Peter, I don't know the man. Now me talking about Peter ain't helping you none, so let me talk about you. How many times have you denied the Lord? How many times have you backed up on your testimony? Talk to me. You know. Hallelujah. How many times have he presented the opportunity for you to be the shining light and you put your candle on a bush? Come on, talk to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? You was too afraid to be identified. You want to be a secret disciple. But when the pressure got on, he denied him and all the gah, 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 and it broke his heart. Show sure enough. Now, he meant well. And reason why he, we know he was willing to die with Jesus because he didn't want to pull that, man, pull that sword to cut that man here off. It's on now. But amen now. He was trying to, he told him the kingdom of God ain't going to come in with violence, brother. Put that thing up. Hallelujah. Violence begets violence, don't it now? Look how Hatfields and McCoy's. I don't know if that's true or not, but amen, praise the Lord. Violence begets violence. But my Bible says, amen, a soft answer turneth the way wrath. Why? For the wrath of man don't work the righteousness of God. Come on, talk to me. The, right, the, the, the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Why? Because lust is involved, and that person that's, got, that's given the wrath is not going to be satisfied until his enemy is put down. But the Bible declared, Jesus said, love your enemies. Do Good to them that despitefully use you. Pray for your enemies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Notice what he, he told Simon. <laughs> Satan desires you. He desires you. That he may sift you as sweet. And that sifting is going on among us now. He ain't working with the world. Y'all look this way. He ain't working with the world. He's working with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this preacher here, I only deal in one thing. I deal in truth. Amen. And I know how to keep him off me. He come against me, but praise God. Hallelujah. He can't get in me. And this is the thing I'm working on John 14, 30. Jesus said, a prince of this world is coming. He's coming. But brother, he ain't got nothing in me. Hallelujah. Amen. I gave my line, his line back. I gave him his line back. His cheating back. Amen now. Hallelujah. I gave him his cowardness back. I gave it back to him. Hallelujah. Proverbs 29 and 1 said, amen, the wicked flee when ain't no man running after. But the righteous are bold as a lion, brother. I gave his cowardness back to him. And I took on the boldness of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Thank you, Lord. That boldness compels us to stand when it's easy to fall. To tell the truth when it's much easier to lie and get out of trouble. That boldness causes us to honor him above and beyond. What the army calls performing above and beyond the call of duty. <laughs> Amen. And we are called to do service. I want you to see something here. This man was not filled with the Holy Ghost 
you are filled with the Holy Ghost. This man walked with the Lord. You haven't walked with the Lord in person per se, but in the spirit you're walking with the Lord. Amen? Which is the perfect presence of God in our lives. This man did not have the Holy Ghost in him at this time. We have the Holy Ghost in us right now. We have, and through the Holy Ghost, we have the capacity to believe God for the supernatural and the miraculous. But circumstances have hidden the God's people and came upon God's people until the devil is sifting, trying to get us to minimize God or not to know what God's will is concerning the situation. Therefore, we don't pray like we should pray. Or should I say the Holy Ghost can't pray through us because we're still trapped in our emotions and Satan sifts and he sifts. And here's where the trouble is. You come and try, God's man comes and tries to encourage you in the word and the first thing come out of your mouth, well, I know that scripture, yeah, but do you believe it? When things happen that are horrific, people die. Well, we were born to die, both naturally and spiritually. We were. But people die, and we get, we get discouraged. Hallelujah. The, the, the most critical time in my life as a saint was when my mama left him. And that enemy would ride me 24 hours a day. All them people that God used you to hear. How come he didn't hear your mama? You see what I'm saying. Hallelujah. And just when I, I you don't never get over things. You have to learn to deal with it. And the only way I could deal with it is, I thank God that I had her for 62 years. And you can't take that. And he took her, but he didn't take the memories. You see what I'm saying? And then Tommy left him. Hallelujah. And then when I started, you know, when, when I started passing, when people started leaving him. Hallelujah. And we pray and believe God to, to heal them and to deliver them. But do you not know it makes no difference how powerful God's man or woman is if that person doesn't have the desire to stay here, they're not going to stay here. But Satan uses that to try to minimize God's power. But brothers and sisters, if he don't heal nobody from here to when he come, he's still God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The persecution is coming, the trials. We're being persecuted now, but not like we're going to be persecuted. Amen now. Yeah. Hallelujah. And one thing persecution does, it definitely purifies your motives. It lets you know whether you really love God or not. The sifting is taking place now. Hallelujah. He's calling for the saints to stand up and be saints. Somebody said people are dying that ain't never died before. You got that right. People leaving him. I, I, I said, amen, praise the Lord. I, I, I know what I've both been preaching because he gave me the dream. And in the dream, last week I, I was telling my wife this morning, I said, last week I had this thought. I said, dear God, what's going on, Lord? I mean, every dream that you gave me concerning the church growing, all of those dreams, I mean, what, what's going on? I mean, what am I doing? I ain't nothing, no shortage in you. What am I doing? I'm, all I, I know to do is preach your word. Hallelujah. That's all I know to do. Tell the truth and live by the word. That's all I know. Hallelujah. And praise God, I left it alone. Because he didn't say nothing. And brothers and sisters, around by 6 o'clock this morning, I woke up and then I dozed back off. I looked at the clock and I said, okay. I got, still got a couple of hours. And I dozed back off. And I saw Bethel. Bethel was jam-packed. And in this corner was a group for the elderly folks, the saints. And on that side of the church was a row of folks sitting in red robes. And people were started coming in. And what I thought I was supposed to preach this morning, I was standing there preaching it this morning about this sifting that's going on. And folks started coming in. And I said, dear God, Lord, forgive me. Please forgive me. Hallelujah. I, I, I was getting kind of worried. 
whether I was going to still be here when it happened. But apparently I am because, praise God, I was there. Now, I tell you what got me so fired up. A few weeks, uh, uh, about almost a month ago, in, De in December, we was having a problem with our sewer line. And, and, and here's what God taught me through that. We're going back and forth and going back and forth with the people. He taught me that even the things, he gave me scripture. He said, I'm touched with the feelings of your infirmity. I know what you're going through. I'm touched. If it bothers you, it bothers me. And the gentleman from the water department came out, Dr. Brown. And me and him was talking and he said, listen, I'm going to call, I ain't going to call the guy's name, but he said, I'm going to call so-and-so and see if we can't do this, Mr. Douglas. And he got in his truck and drove off. I went in the house, and I, where my desk is, I can, I, I can look right outside the road. I sat there for a while, and the man never did call, and then I dozed off. And I had a dream that the water department had drove up, and what got out of that truck was this big Caucasian man. And from across the street, there was a kind of heavy set white lady with one of these things that you measure yards with, and she was coming from that way, coming toward our house. And then I came out of it. And I raised up and looked, and the man truck was out there. When I opened the door, he said, Mr. Douglas, in the dream, I, I, I got up, and I went into the living room, and my wife was standing in the living room looking out at them. And I said, thank God they made it like that there. And then I came out of it. When I opened the door, the man said, Mr. Douglas, so-and-so said, we're going to do it. I said, thank God. I'm not talking about days. I'm talking about a matter of hours. God worked that thing out and gave me a dream that he did work it out. You see. And I told my wife, I said, you know what? I'm going to start actually paying attention. I'm going to start paying attention and praying when God give me dreams and stuff. Well, like I said, I was kind of concerned on last week, and then God answered me this morning. I said, well, Lord, thank you. The devil trying to sift those dreams that God gave me. Like I said, I'm no prophet. I'm no apostle, but I'm a dreamer. Hallelujah. And I understand that about me. I can't interpret the dream, but God is interpreting for me what I need that for. Well, bless his name. Show you something, then I do it. Hallelujah. And praise God. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, praise God, in my life, God is doing some things. Hallelujah. In the lives of God's people, I'm here to tell you, do not give up on God. Hallelujah. You fighting the devil in your body, do not give up on God. You facing things on the job, do not. Give up on God. I said a while back, I was listening to it this morning. Been listening to it on and off this week. Nobody wins in this thing but God, and ain't nobody running nothing but God. Hallelujah. And we need to understand that our adversary, Peter calls him an adversary. Our adversary, he's here to work against us. But brothers and sisters, everything he does, God causes it to work for good for us. I want Romans 8.28. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you, praise God, a while back that those that come against us, that's for our good. Why? Because they make us pray more than we ever prayed. You believe me? Say amen. Romans 8 and 28, please. And we know that all, and we know that all things work together. For who's us. working them together? Who's working together? God, God is at work. You believe me? Say amen. He's working this thing out. Hold it. Hold it. And he don't fix nothing when they get broke. Everybody look this way here. It's on our road. Every obstacle, Dr. Brown, we face, it's already ordained by God. Amen. Now, every trial that we go through, it's already ordained by God. But wait a minute. No trial, no conqueror. Amen. Now, no trial, no victory. You believe me? Say amen. Like the Bible says, if we suffer with him, we reign with him, brother. But I tell you right now, we reigning with him in the spirit. You believe me? Say amen. Why? Because the devil is still subject to us. Well, bless his name. Hallelujah. Hey, look this way, everybody. 
I got the same Holy Ghost and you got the same Holy Ghost that God gave on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Peter may have been a coward when they came to get Jesus. <laughs> but brother, we see that man on the day of Pentecost. He, well, you couldn't see a chicken bone in his body, says Jesse. No, sir. Amen. Now, that man knew that they wasn't going to like it, but brother, the Holy Ghost pushes us to do what we cannot do in our flesh. He empowers us to represent. Ain't that what the old young folks got now? They're probably old saying to them now. Nah, rep, I got to represent. Well, he empowers us to represent. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, we're not over in China or Russia or, or, or Mogadishu, huh? Where them, them, them saints are hiding to have church and then them that's openly professing Jesus Christ are being butchered and slaughtered. But it's common. It's common. A while back, amen, God gave me the insight to understand that this persecution that's over there is heading this way. It's already here, but it's undercover. Notice something now. Notice something. We, as God's people, are nowhere as near as powerful as them old times, like our mamas and grandmamas, all them that were saying. You see what I'm saying? You know why? Because we're being modernized now. We're being called into the, the here and now and not thinking about the future. Them saints, all they thought about it was Jesus was coming. They didn't get caught up in the world like we are now. You know what the highest form of love is? It's doing for some, doing for people that, that can't stand you. Hallelujah. I read yesterday, Jesus said, when they take your cloak, give them your coat also. Them that ask your enemies, ask for, give it to them, ask for nothing in return. So it ain't about you getting nothing. It's about you giving. Huh? It's about you giving of yourself and your resources. Amen? And the devil, one of the ways he's sifting the saints, he's sifting us trying to be something, trying to have something in this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not a saint because I dress nice. I dress nice because I'm a saint. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. I'm not caught up in the fashions of the world. Never have been. If they would, I probably, I'm pretty sure I couldn't get away with it on Sunday morning. But I'd preach in a t-shirt and brew jeans if, if y'all wouldn't cut up too bad. I would now. But, but amen. I ain't took, amen. Saints had a problem with preacher preaching in a short sleeve shirt. So I know you ain't going to go for <laughs> me preaching no t-shirt. Amen now. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the things about, about this thing here is that Satan is using the world to gather our attention. Amen now. Hallelujah. And, and do you not understand that even the, the, the so-called saved folks call themselves evangelicals are trying to push an agenda to get that man in there. Once they got him in there, they just don't know what's going on. They ain't got a clue what's going on. Now, if they could, they would repeal it. That's true. That's true. But it's already done. Amen. Sister, Sister Edna, our help and our hope is in the Lord. Give me a Who made this country great? Why? Because of the invitation of the people for God to come in. And we honored him so much, Brother Brown, Dr. Brown, until we put him on the money. <laughs> Holl it! We put the name of the true God on the name of this little God. Why? Because we wanted the world to know our God is God. Huh? <laughs> Do you know they're trying to repeal that now? They talk about right, right new, new money now. And that's okay. Do what you want when I'm gone. <laughs> Amen. Have your way when I'm gone. Because when God take out all of the saints... They go, he'll give the world just what they want, a devil. 
you want the devil have at it. Hallelujah. And he'll be like that fly paper. You won't be able to shake him off. Huh? But the devil is sifting now. He's sifting through the government officials. He's sifting through the political officials. He's sifting through the religious officials. Hallelujah. I, I, I never dreamed what happened has happened. I kind of thought Bishop Winbush would be Bishop until I leave at least. <laughs> till I die. Uh, Dr. Brown, I had individuals calling me to vote for, but you don't even know what district I'm on. Don't know who my superintendent is. I said, oh, oh, my God. So we've come to now, I, and it took me back to S.C. Mitchell's message about uh, 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 politics being ruled by money and power. And he said, now, and, and he warned them preachers when C.D. Orr was presiding bishop. He said, we don't need to bring that junk off in here. That's the way the world handles their mess. I said, dear God, God sent warning after warning. And men with a little brief authority think they can overthrow this Bible here or God is just going to overlook this because I'm so wonderful. I'm so so in with the people. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, we ain't going to miss what God used in that man, Bishop Winbush, until if the Lord delay is coming about a few years, give it a, give it, give, give it a few years. And brothers and sisters, you talking about politics. Amen. Hallelujah. Mind you now, I ain't never been no prophet. I ain't never claimed to be no prophet. But God give us to see things ahead of time. And I, I, I say, God, spare your people. Because the way this thing is headed, the rest of the old saints is going to get out. A show enough. I said when they, they invited this fellow out of New Orleans down to the big meeting in St. Louis. I said, now you see what's going on? We got people that don't that, that at one time ridiculed us, but they took out of this church what they like, such as the worship. And now we got these people out of these different persuasions coming in to try to preach to the saints. Hallelujah. With those who have influence, we don't need your influence over here. No, sir. A man that don't know nothing about holiness can't preach to me how to live. You're sending a message, but it's the wrong message. We ain't never said we better than nobody else. Hold it. Up, back up here. The church of God in Christ has never said they were better than nobody else. As far as I know now. But we've been ridiculed because of the way we live. With what we believe. That holiness is the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But all of a sudden now, what once was condemned has been pulled off. Hey, it ain't been pulled off. It has been pulled off among us. Hallelujah. And when Satan is in the house, there is no blessing. Amen. That's the only way you can understand why a lot of these folks off in the, the Kojic persuasion are sick and broke down and they getting out of him and I'm talking about in the upper crust sure enough why the whole if the head is sick the body's sick if the whole head is sick like he said in Isaiah then the body cannot help but be sick hallelujah and I and, and just like God is sick of it I'm sick of it I'm sick of the hiding Hallelujah. The cloak and dagger. Hallelujah. Sick of it. Why, why can't we just be saints? Why can't we just be saints? But the enemy knows in order to get the people up under them, I got to get them with power, money, and persuasion and association. There's a saying, association breeds assimilation. When you assimilate something, it means you get just like it. So the standard that once was here, everybody look this way. The standard that God set up here is still up here. <laughs> God's people have been seduced 
with things like you think you're better than everybody else. You're trying to be holier than thou. You see, we start up here obeying God to the fullest. And little by little, not enough for you to notice now, right off the bat, but little by little, we've diminished. And brothers and sisters, listen, let me tell you something. Those that God started out using, when they started compromising with the world, God backed up. I got witnesses here. What we experiencing now was over in the, um, come on, Dr. Brown, you know where I'm going. <laughs> so, Colin, you know where I'm going. It was over there among them folks. But they chose to educate. We're going to educate the people out of sin. God backed off. And brother, that thing came over here. And Bishop <laughs> J.O. Patterson said, I don't mind you getting educated as long as you don't lose the burning. He saw things. He saw where we was going. Just because you're a school teacher don't no mean you're anointed to teach God's what? Just because you're a big shot in the education system don't mean you get what? Bless his name. Your position in the world don't mean nothing. When you come over here, you got to become unlearned in order to learn this. You got to learn how to live holy. And praise God, learning and not doing it ain't going to help you none. Huh? To him to know to do good and don't do it is it's sin. And wait a minute, last I checked now, like I got a King James Version, I checked from time to time, and last I checked, the ways of sin is still death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So notice, the sifting is going on. Everybody look this way, and God won't stop it. Just like he didn't stop the devil from coming at Job. Show sure enough. He didn't stop the devil from coming at Paul, did he not? Did he not? He didn't stop the, the persecution. He didn't stop that persecution, did he? Huh? Why? I will have me a people. But I'm going to have a people that are purified. Hallelujah. Have pulled off the old man and their desires and their ambitions. I hold it. That's the part right there. We got a whole bunch of folks that's ambitious. I'm told in Hebrews 13 to be content with such things as I have. Be content where God got me. Not to try to be nothing, try to have nothing, or try to go nowhere apart from him. Amen. Why? If he got me right here, he got me here to fulfill his purpose. His purpose, not mine. Hallelujah. I said a while back, I want to I wanna hear it one more time. Folks so full of themselves, they making their own name and ministers after themselves now. And since the time Jesus Christ came into this world and started the church, it's his church. His ministry, Paul in Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Paul. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whose gospel is it? Who saves? Who heals? Who delivers? Who set men free? Jesus Christ. Hold it. The devil ain't scared of Paul. Well, bless his name. Look out, you seven sons of Siva. I know Paul, but I ain't scared of him. I'm scared of that God that's in him. He got the real deal. You just, you just fake it and shake it. Huh? But ask for and draft that know the name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, other than the name of Jesus Christ. And that dog is still scared of Jesus. And anybody that carries him in them. Hallelujah. And Paul prayed for them in Corinthians. I'm praying for y'all until Christ be formed. And he's in there. Like a baby is planted. That seed is planted, but he got to be formed in that woman's room. I'm praying for y'all until you be formed. Christ be formed in you. In other words, until you get mature enough where you can put a, the devil down in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That sifting is going on. That sifting is going on. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. Notice now, I prayed for you. 
that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, now that conversion is what I want to spend these last few minutes on. That conversion is what makes the difference. That conversion is what brings you from just a mediocre churchgoer to a powerful saint. Amen. That, that conversion only takes place when you get in the book and take it off the pages and put it in your heart. Amen. Now, didn't Peter deny him? But brothers and sisters, when he got filled with the Holy Ghost, that was the main, that was the, the person of the Holy Ghost is the one that brought all things back to their remembrance. Hold it. Everybody look this way. And the Holy Ghost is what make this book come alive to our hearts. Amen. Now. Hallelujah. When trouble comes, he brings up the word. Don't he now? When, 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 when temptation comes, he brings up the word. Why? Jesus said in John 6 and 63, my word is spirit and my word is life. Oh, glory to God. And when you get in a dead situation, this word will give life to you to say you will be saved. Out. That's why he said, having done all the stand, stand anyway. Stand well. Galatians 5 and 1, you've been free. Now you stay free. I gave you liberty. I didn't come to just give you any kind of life. I came to give you real life, a full life, a life like Abraham lived. Hallelujah. What would you say, Dr. Brown? The Bible calls him the friend of God. He's the friend of God. Brother, I'm telling you. And then Jesus called us friends. Amen. If we do whatsoever he commands us. Hold it. Now, who's the, who court is that ball in now? It's in my court. I can obey him or let the devil seduce me. And tell me, oh, that'll do. That'll do. God understand. He know you can't help it. He know you just flesh. Why is my Bible all through the New Testament told me to crucify my flesh then? Because he knew, God knows, that as long as I stay in my flesh, the devil will use me as a doormat. But, brother, I walk in God's spirit, praise God. He's scared of the Holy Ghost. You better know it. Brother, he's just scared of the Holy Ghost as a little child sleeping in the dark. Amen. Hallelujah. And praise God, we got folk around God's house. Amen. I don't think the Holy Ghost is for us. Use a lie. Hallelujah. I don't think I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Use a lie. Amen. Ain't no power to stand without the Holy Ghost. You'll be saying, man, and the Holy Ghost is going to bring this word to life in your life. Well, bless his name so that when you open your mouth, he speaks through you. And when he speaks, that dog ain't going to die sit there. No, sir. No, sir. This conversion has everything to do with us being committed. Committed. Some of us are devoted. We devote. We get up and pray every time, certain time in the morning. We devoted. But that commitment means that you surrendered. You have surrendered all of you. I'm not holding back nothing, Lord. All to you I bring. Saved it to the cross, I clean. I'm yours. I'm, from top to bottom, in and out, I'm yours. It's not what I want. It's what you want. Uh, everybody, look this way here. When you cross over to the fact that it ain't what you desire, then things just have a way of finding you. Amen now. Show sure now. Hallelujah. I, it's been about four or five things that have happened to me in a positive way on just this last week and a half. I said, dear God, Maybe I'm ready to leave now. Although, amen. But I had about four or five good things that happened to me. I mean, back to back. Hallelujah. And you know what I'm believing? I'm believing God to raise the dead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There are individuals that have been counted out, given up. But I told my wife, I said, you know what? I can't speak for nobody else. But I believe God will do it if we just furnish this faith that he gave us. Everything we got came from him. And he gave us that faith to believe him. If he did it in the Bible once, if he did it in our lifetime once, he'll do it again. You believe me? Say amen. And so I don't believe nothing no doctor say. I don't believe. Listen, brothers and sisters, when it comes time to the end of the road, God determines who stays and who leaves. Amen. But until he take them out of here, I believe we ought to trust God. Thank you, Jesus. 